Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome, everybody. I am so excited to share with you today someone very, very special to me. Her name is Carrie Wolf. She is a virtual expert and email ninja. And don't take that email ninja lightly. She really is an email ninja. She's the owner of Wolf Den Virtual Assistants. Carrie has taken her love of order organization, and systems and paired it with her life experience of being a military spouse for the past 20 plus years, and she's turned it into a thriving business. Carrie loves working from home where she spends her days supporting her clients by running their systems and making sure that their business and projects stay on track. When Carrie isn't in the office, you can find her walking her dogs or cooking up something delicious in the kitchen. And for full disclosure, <laughs> Carrie's special to me for many reasons. And one of the biggies is because she is my email and calendar ninja. And she also works on project management with me doing work on my events. So Carrie and I have worked very closely together for a couple of years now, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But right now, I want to let Carrie do some talking. Welcome, Carrie. Hi, Kathy. I am so excited to be here today and to be back in my office um, after taking some time off. So I'm just glad to be back in, I say the real world, but it's like the virtual world. But having worked in the virtual world for so long, to me, it's like, this is like going back to work and I just kind of feel at home in my office again. So it's been really nice. Yeah. And Carrie, I think one of the things that I love so much about you is that you really enjoy your work. Can you talk I a little do. bit about that? I love what I do. I absolutely, I love wearing my comfy clothes to work and my slippers. Um, Full disclosure, I look put together on the top, but I am wearing baby Yoda comfy pants and my slippers on the bottom. So that's one of the things I love the most about working from home is that I can dress up when I need to and still be comfortable on the bottom. But I love getting my coffee in the morning and coming up to my office and just I boot everything up. And one of my favorite parts of my day is checking into all my different clients' systems and projects to make sure, you know, what are we behind on? What needs to get done? What do I need to talk about at this next meeting? And I just, I love that part about my job. I just yeah. like doing it. And um, I love that part about your job too, because <laughs> when I come to work, <laughs> when I come to work, you have already been in my email and calendar and systems, and it's all cleaned up and ready for me to have a very easy start to my day. Yeah. And, and I love really amazing. I love doing that for my clients that I can get in there before they do so that when they log in for the first time, their stuff is not a mess. It's all nice and tidy. Everything is where it's supposed to be and running how it's supposed to be. And if we discover there's a hiccup or, you know, something just kind of seems off, then the first thing I do is I start checking settings and systems. And for example, when your mailbox is really slow and doesn't have a lot of incoming in emails, then my first thought is, okay, do we have all the import emails coming in like they're supposed to be? Because like we found the one time that connection got severed and... And that just kind of was a learning experience for me. And ever since then, whenever I've noticed the inbox is slower than normal, I check all of the all of the settings and accounts to make sure something needs doesn't need to get resynced. So, yeah, red flag, red flag. She's not getting tons of emails. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I when I log into your account in the morning and there's less than sixty or seventy emails, I'm like, 
okay, what's going on? Is it just a slow day? Or, you know, do we need to reconnect some things? So being able to spot those ahead of my client and take care of it is, is really important. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I will share with you guys that if you're like I was, I thought I will never be able to allow somebody else to do my email or my calendar. I'm the only one who knows how to do that how could anybody else do that? And luckily I had a coach who forced me to do a time audit to see how much time I was actually spending doing that. And to my great shock, I was spending more than 10 hours a week just on email and calendaring. And quite honestly, I know I was spending probably more like 15 or 20 Um, so when I hired Carrie and she went in and with her brilliance organized everything, um, I am now saving a minimum of 10 hours a week, a week, um, from not having to do those things. Thank you, Carrie, for saving that time for me. Absolutely. And when you think about it in terms of 10 hours a week, in the course of a month, that's 40 hours. That's, that's almost an entire week of solid work that you're getting saved by outsourcing your email and calendar management. So it really, and it's it really does done better. Yes. And, you know, and when you message me, they're like, I thought I saw this email. Where did it go? I love being able to tell you if I had seen it and where I put it. Um, you know, and when you work with your clients long enough and you, you learn their business and you learn what their priorities are and what's important to them, it makes it so much easier to run through their inbox and make it run efficiently so that when that does happen, I know exactly where it went and why it went there. And, you know, and the, it hasn't been without hiccups. You know, it was a learning process for us both as, as I was learning your preferences and your email voice and and we were learning how to work together. Anytime we would find something that doesn't work, we would just tweak it or change it And I, until we got a system down pat. But I tell all of my new email clients that it will take, you know, it, there's no overnight pill. There is no overnight filter that's going to fix it. Um, your email's a wreck because it's not been properly run. <laughs> Um, and I'll be my honest, was a wreck and my calendar was a wreck. I had, I had gotten to the oh point where goodness. I was double booking myself on a regular basis. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But you know, nothing gets me really super, super, super excited than to see an inbox that has like several hundred emails and no folders. And it's, and I just love to get my coffee and sit down and just pick apart the different system and the set up filters and folders and get everything automated but it's a process, you know, it's a process to get all of that set up. It's a process for me to teach the client how to use the folder labels and what they mean and and why we're doing it this way. And it takes about three months before we really get into a groove and that inbox is running efficiently, primarily on its own, you know, where things are getting labeled as they come in or sorted as they come in. And it, it takes about three months. So it does require some patience and a little bit of training on the client's part just to understand why it takes so long and why we're setting folders up. But, you know, after that, it just runs pretty smoothly. Yeah. And honestly, if somebody's going, oh my God, 90 days. Well, it's not like there's nothing being done for 90 days. There's a lot being done in those 90 days. It's just not as perfected as it's going to be. It's not running as smoothly. I should say not perfected. It's not running as smoothly as it's going to be by the end of those 90 days. Well, you know, and part of it is also training Google. You know, it's training your Gmail. and, And a lot of people don't realize that you can train your Gmail to recognize messages that should be important and should not be important. It's catching things that missed a filter because it was labeled slightly different in the sending address. And it's just a process of catching those as they slip through the filters and setting a new one up to make sure it goes where it's supposed to go. And um, you also had to train me and you're still having to remind me to stay out of my email and calendar. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. You want to? I always you know share you... one of the big one of the big things I did wrong accidentally <laughs> when I accidentally deleted like a ton of stuff. Oh, in your calendar? I didn't even know. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about when, when you book yourself and you double book yourself still. <laughs> yes, I absolutely <clears throat> will still do that. And Carrie says, please stop booking. Please let me do this. Yeah. I always know when you've booked something yourself, because it'll be over, over something that it shouldn't be. Um, yeah. Yes. But one time you were working in your calendar and all of a sudden everything disappeared. Like it was just gone off the calendar. <laughs> And I get this frantic slack. I don't know what I did, but everything is gone. <laughs> and I said, okay, all right, just take a breath. I'll figure it out. There's not much I can't fix in, in Gmail or in Google. Um, and I think it was maybe five minutes later, I had everything restored back to where it was. But yeah, you're a miracle worker. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it can be scary when all of a sudden you're working and then what you're working on just disappears and you have no idea where it went. You know, I was working with um, one of the gals that I was coaching that um, in the program I'm coaching and she slacked me and she's like, I was working on, you know, this client's email and I'm sorting and all of a sudden they all disappeared and I can't find them anywhere and I'm totally freaking out. So calmed her down and, you know, over Slack, um, we were able to figure out exactly where the emails were, where they were hiding, and she got everything restored and set up. And she's like, okay, I'm good now. I'm going to stop for the night and have a drink. I'm like, I think you should. I think you should. Um, yeah, so there's there's really not a whole lot that I can't figure out or fix if I, if I run into it. But I like that. I like that part of my job. And you, you really do love what you do and it shows because to me, that level of detail, that level of patience that you have, I don't have. That's why I double book myself if I try to book myself and why right. I lose emails. Um, another thing that I love that you do, and this is like magic to me. I don't know how you do it. Okay. You don't need to share here how you do it, um, but we'll share in a little bit. We're going to share how if you're. A, a virtual assistant or a freelancer or a business owner who wants to learn the magic of what uh, <laughs> Carrie does <laughs> with email and calendar management. Mm -hmm. Carrie's actually created a training program. Um, and we're going to yeah. talk about that in a few minutes. But first, I want her to share, um, or I'm going to state on my calendar now, she has tasks for me. Okay. And yes. when because I time block. And when that task pops up, all I have to do is click on that task on my calendar. That calendar comes, that uh, time Events. block comes up. And there she has a link to whatever work it is I need to do. I don't even have to go find it. And I will yes. tell you that in the past, I've spent the entire time I had set aside to do the task, trying to find the task. <laughs> right. Right. And that's, that's one of the things that, um, I don't know where I learned it or where I heard it, but my thinking is you need your time as much of your time as possible to stay in your zone of genius, to create your program, to create new trainings, to write the presentations that you've got to give and fill out the forms. And so, and my thinking is, as much information as I can put on that calendar for you, the better, because then you're not going to waste, you know, 20 minutes trying to find a document or 20 minutes trying to find the link to a website. If I can put everything you need right there in that little square that pops up, that saves you time, which will eventually, you know, time is money. So by doing that, it just saves you a lot. And then everything you need is just right there. There's no need to go searching for it or wonder where it's at. So yeah, that's something that I really like to do for my clients. It is incredible. I can't even tell you how much I love that. And Carrie didn't even tell me she's going to start doing it. She just did. And I would open it and go, oh, it's right there. Oh my God. Oh, I love this so much. She's like, yeah, yep, just one, just another little service I do for you. <laughs> just another little, little nugget in the, in the treasure box. Yeah. 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 
So would you talk a little bit about this training program that you've created and why you created it and who it's ideal for? Yeah, I would love to. So I have an online training program. It's called Email and Calendar Management, Taking Your Client's Inbox from Chaos to Clarity. Uh, and it's it drips out one module per week over seven weeks. And there are PDF downloads. There are examples. There are links to things. The way I teach it is with a screen share so that all my students can see exactly what I'm doing and where it's found in the Gmail account. And I just go through the whole process. You know, I spent two years pulling my hair out, trying to figure things out, learning things, um, going through the Google Workspace certification. I spent the time with the trial and error and pulling my hair out so that other VAs don't have to. They can purchase the course, go through it, and learn all the different settings a lot of people don't realize that your email comes with so many different settings that can really maximize your um, maximize your inbox and your efficiency by going around a lot of the default settings Google gives you because they're not really, you know, just for an average person, they're great. But when you're running an online business or coaching business or you're a speaker or an author, your inbox is more complex than just emailing with friends and family. You know, you have a whole different type of categorizing system that you need. And so through my email management course, I teach the students what all the settings are, why they're important, and then how we restructure an inbox. And I mean, we will completely break an inbox. I call it break, but um, we, we restructure the inbox. We set up your filters and your folders and your labels, and we just go through the whole system of restructuring and what types of folder trees you need and and that sort of thing. And then I also cover calendar management and how that goes hand in hand with the email to make sure your clients have everything they need on their calendar from their email. And uh, that little golden nugget of putting all your task items on the calendar, I cover how to do that in the email class in the calendar module. So it's just, you know, it's seven weeks and a couple of bonuses. For other VAs, people who want to become a VA, but they don't really have a, a niche or they want to learn a niche, it's a great way to learn it from somebody that has spent the years doing it and pulled their hair and struggled and, and cried and put the computer in timeout because they weren't playing nice with the other systems that I was trying to sync them to. Um, so it just saves a lot of headache. And the, the PDF assets are Great because it, it gives you checklists and um, cheat sheets for the different settings. And if you're doing it on a client where you can note how you set it up and what their preferences are. I also give them some sample SOPs. When they do an inbox, I teach them it's important to set up inbox rules. You know, Kathy, you and I have our inbox rules so that I know what each label means and specific emails need to be sent to specific people, you know, setting an SOP up for that. Um, just it, it helps you become more valuable to your client because it shows that you are investing your time in their business to make sure their business runs smoother. And so that's, that's what the course does is it teaches new VAs or a VA wanting to learn a new skill, how to do that efficiently. Yeah. And it, the, even VAs who don't want to do this for their clients, but want to be able to run their own inbox, yes. it would be beneficial for them. Or business owners, uh, I, I'm going to give this caveat here. If you are a really busy business owner and or you want to grow your business super fast, don't do this yourself. Hire somebody like Carrie to do this. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're not at that point, you're not wanting to grow fast, um, you, you have a lot of time. Uh, and you love to do this kind of stuff, then uh, business owners can take your class too, right? All kinds oh, of yes. answers in business. Oh, owners. absolutely. It's yeah. it's available for anyone to take. Um, this last cohort that I ran, I had a couple people take it, not because this is their niche, but because they wanted to understand and do their own email better and more efficiently because they're not at that scaled up position where they can hire someone to do it, but they wanted to learn more so they could understand. And um, that was, that was the last cohort. The next one I'm getting ready to run will start in January. 
so everyone can start the new year off with a fresh, clean, organized inbox. And hopefully 2022 will be a little more streamlined and organized for them. So that'll be when the class runs next. Yeah, I love it. So anybody who's listening to this, if you're interested in learning more about Carrie's training program, and you know, if you're listening to this past January, 2022, just realize that she has classes ongoing. So don't mm-hmm. hesitate to go look at that because this is going to be happening over and over and over again for a long time. Um, if you're listening to this before January, 2022, sign up. <laughs> yes. And, and we'll have the link in the show notes where you can go mm-hmm. um, look and see, learn more about the program and register for it. Right. And one of the reasons that I don't, it's not evergreen where it's not constantly available is because I like to be available to the students to provide them email support and answer their questions and give them feedback when they, when they need help. And so I build in the classes to where my work schedule will allow me that extra time that I can give to the people and to the students signing up. That way you're not just buying a course and you have no support or anyone to reach out to. I like to give that hands-on, um, coaching and help to the people that take the course. And one um, acronym you used that I want to revisit and have you talk about it. You said SOPs. Can you, can you say what that is? And all that, all about that. Okay, go ahead. So an SOP is a standard operating procedure. Um, Some companies might have procedure manuals or instruction manuals, but in general, An SOP is your standard operating procedure. And I secretly geek out a lot when I get to write an SOP for a process because um, my brain is just hardwired. It's just wired that way for logistics and organization and order and checklists and, and boxes. And so when I write an SOP, I get really excited because that means I get to take one process and break it down step by step for how it's done. And when I write an SOP, it's very thorough. I include screenshots where I need to. I, it's literally a click by click walkthrough of the task. And then once I've done that, I do a screen recording of me performing the task so that I can make sure what I've written and what I'm showing, they match together. And then that just gives another person just one more avenue to see it because, you know, some people are visual learners and they've got to see it to understand it. So I always do a link on the SOP to the video walkthrough. And I do that for all of my clients for every single task that I perform for them. Um, I know that seems like a lot. I think I have like 20 ish for Kathy for all the different things that I do. But I feel like I feel very strongly about having SOPs in place so that if I'm gone, such as the past three weeks, I've been out of the office recovering from surgery. So whoever's filling in for me can look at the SOP for the task and be able to do it. I'm, I'm sorry, should be able to do it exactly how I have 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 written it out. <laughs> and that way, you know, client tasks aren't getting forgotten or not done. And I also do that in my own business and my own SOPs have been slower to get written because when you're doing a lot of things yourself, it's easy just to do them. But now that I've started building a team, I've had to start documenting each of the things I do so that the team member I hand it off to is able to execute um, 80% as well as I can or better uh, based on the SOPs that I write. Yeah. And Gary, your SOPs are amazing. I really value um, all the work you put into them. And I thank you so much for doing them for me as one of your clients. And I network with a lot of business owners and I hear them often saying, well, I have to create an SOP before I can hire a virtual assistant. And I'm like, no, you do not. If you hire a virtual expert like Carrie is, then she will write these for you and they will be, well, I'm going to speak for myself a thousand times better than what I would have created (laughs) because first of all, I don't know how to do it. Um, I don't know how to do the tasks that she does. And I don't know how to write the SOP and I don't have the patience to do it. Yeah. Like Carrie. And that's, 
And it does require patience because it's a lot of, sometimes it's trial and error, especially um, I took on an operations client where I am their operations and project manager and they had no SOPs. They had nothing documented. One person, it was a, a one person shop and they had one other person helping them, but nobody had documented anything. And I thought, oh my goodness, I was speechless. I wasn't quite sure where to start. So what I often do in times like that, where an operations client has no SOPs or processes documented, they often don't know where to start or what should have an SOP or what should be documented. So the easiest way is for me to get on a Zoom call with them. And sometimes it takes two calls, um, but for about an hour we get on and it's just a brain dump for them. I record the call and just let them brain dump like what all everybody does, what each of their clients needs. And then from there, I figure out, okay, what process do we need to document? What task do we need to figure out? And then I, I figure out their workflows and then write the process and the SOPs for the different workflows. Um, and so, you know, there, a lot of times they're like, I don't, I don't see how this is going to help just getting on a call for an hour and talking about what I do. And I said, you would be surprised how much we can figure out in that hour to get documented and get your workflows mapped out so that you are providing the same consistent service for your clients with each client. And it's not just a, a wing it each time. So it's, it can be a process, but you know, we get it figured out and we start writing the SOPs and they were like, this is amazing. Sooner. Uh oh. There we go. Let's just, let's just pause for a second. In fact, let's, let's just pause for a second right here. Okay. I don't know what just happened, but while we're pausing, I'm going to run up and shut the door because my dogs are going to go crazy. Here. Okay. Thank you, hon. My husband knew they were going to go crazy. He shut it. Nice. Oh, you know what probably happened? Something popped up on your screen. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, you were talking about SOPs and did you wrap that up or do you want to close that? Oh, I'll, I'll wrap it up. Um, so you know, a lot of times they'll think that just an hour long phone call isn't going to get them anywhere. But once I convince them to do the call and we start writing the SOPs and then I say, okay, now I just need you to do a screen recording as you're doing this task so that I can make sure and grab screen clips and screenshots because I want this SOP to be written so that any of us on your team can grab it and perform the task. And once they start to see things written out and how the workflows go, then they're more on board for getting all of their everything documented. And I put it into a Google Doc with links that go back and forth between the different SOPs and that are related to a task. So it's very user friendly for anyone to click on on their user, you know, their SOP manual and find what they need. So um, it, I love how organized you are because I am not like that at all. I mean, you know how many times I've uh, slacked you and said, uh, I don't even remember why I'm meeting with this person. Could you tell me why? And literally <laughs> Carrie, Carrie tells, yeah. no, don't I? Carrie says, yeah, she remember does. it was this and this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a true story. Um, yeah. Yeah. very rarely do you ask me why am I meeting with this person? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, that's right. You know, because, yeah, well, because I'm the one setting it up. So I'm going back and forth, making sure each side has what they need. Um, usually the ones where I'm not real sure is ones that you've booked and didn't go through me. And so I'm <laughs> like, well, I don't know, Kathy, <laughs> you booked that one. Oh, yeah. dang. How did I book that? <laughs> yeah. So the more I can stay out of the process, the better things go. Yeah. So let's talk um, about your project and operations management services that you offer. 
because I utilize those also. And I know that is something you absolutely love doing for people. So talk a little bit about what you do um, with that service and who you work with. So I work with um, business coaches and trainers, um, authors and speakers. Those are the people I love to work with because I find that I learn from them as I'm working with them. And I, I love to learn and I love to just com- continue to take in knowledge and learn new things. And so that's the, um, you know, those are the type of clients that I'm really drawn to is for the project management or operations management. I find a lot of times that coaches or business owners aren't quite sure what the difference is. And so that's why I call myself a operations and project manager. Um, a lot of, I found that a lot of times they think it's the same thing, but with project management, I will do an event like your, your virtual um, three day online event. And I will run that from beginning through to the end and the wrap up. Um, so that would be a project. Um, I've also done project launches for other clients where they're launching a book, where they're launching a podcast, they've been launching, um, you know, a new coaching program. And so with that, you know, we take it from their beginning conception all the way through the project. We do the launch and then we do an after, I don't know what, in the military, it's called an after action report. Um, But it's like an after event or an after launch uh, summary where we figure out, okay, what worked, what didn't, what do we want to change for the next time? that sort of thing. So I like doing projects where I can take something from the thought to the end. Um, and, and then as far as operations go, that's, that's the everyday operation of your business. You know, it's checking in with all of your team members, making sure everybody's getting their deliverables done on time. If somebody is behind on a project or a client's work, I need to figure out, okay, why are they behind? Do they need extra support from me? Is this task outside of their wheelhouse and they're just struggling through it? So it's a lot of team communication as well as managing the different aspects of the client's business. And it's a lot of people use project management software or programs like Asana or Trello or ClickUp. Um, And so it's making sure everybody is in their program they're getting their stuff done. The business is running smoothly. Anytime that my client needs something new that nobody on their team currently provides, then I start looking for people in my network that can provide that service and make that connection and get that get the ball get the ball rolling for that. Um, and then it's a lot of documenting. If they haven't documented any of their processes, then we start by documenting, um, and it could be just off of screen recordings, it could be from a brain dump, and we start mapping out workflows. And, you know, after a few months of working together and I've learned their business, I learned their priorities and their preferences, then it just kind of starts to come together in this cohesive system where they don't have to do so much. They can work in the revenue generating activities because I'm there running all of the little details that they've been wasting their time on and they don't have time to grow their business. They're too busy running their business. So with operations, that's where I jump in and I help them run things while they are busy um, figuring out how to bring in a new stream of revenue. I love that. And um, if anybody's listening and they're like, wow, I need someone that will help me do any, you know, some of those things, all of those things that you're talking about. How can they schedule a time to talk with you, Carrie, to find out what you might be able to help them with? Yeah. So on my website, I have a contact form that they can fill out. And my website, it should be in the show notes, but it's just Wolf Den, Wolf, like my last name, Den, like a den of wolves. Um, WolfdenVirtualAssistance.com. And then once you're there, you'll be able to explore on the website. Um, You'll be able to see my team. My webmaster just got team pages put up on the website where you can see 
who does what on my team. Um, you can ask me any kind of questions. You can reach out. You can schedule a, a call with me. Um, but yeah, I would love to talk to people to see how we can streamline and, and help them run a bit smoother and more efficient. And um, we really are talking military precision here, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because with her military spouse background and her love of detail, and just quite frankly, your brilliant brain, um, you just combine everything. That's amazing. And, you know, a lot of times I, when I talk to business owners, they say, well, a virtual assistant is an expense. And I say, but a virtual expert like Carrie is not an expense. It is a, she is a profit generator. How is she a right. profit generator? Well, she's a profit generator for me. I'll talk for me. Um, and I know your other clients too, right? Uh, I'm sure you are for them, but for me, she's, we've already said, she saves me 40 hours a month. What am I able to do with those 40 hours? Oh my gosh. I'm able to create new programs that I can sell. I'm able to, uh, do new marketing. I'm able to, you know, take some time off and relax. Um, 40 hours is a lot of time that she saves me there. And as she has gotten to know my business, and she, as she mentioned, she does project management for me on my events. Um, she is able to say, hey, what if we added this training? Or what if we added that training? Or what if we did this? And so she is literally helping me increase my bottom line. And I want to thank you for that, Carrie. It just means the world to me that you, you really own your positions on my team and you care about my business as if it was your own. Well, thank you. I that's that's my goal is is to treat each of my clients' business as if it was my own, and I really I really strive to understand both the client and their business, so that as I'm running through the inbox or I'm seeing opportunities that come in, I'm able to assess: is this a, a good potential fit for my client, or this person is way out of the ballpark? We're going to politely decline, um, but thank them for their time, and so the more I can get involved and get to know my client's business, the easier it is for me because then I can see where there may be a potential hiccup or, you know, there might be a bottleneck. I'm able to identify those things sooner because I know and I understand what their business values are and how their business is running. Yeah. And you're also able once you got to know me to know how to get me to actually get stuff done that I don't want to do. Oh yeah. I did learn that. <laughs> you and everybody really has different, everybody has different yeah. stuff like that, but go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you get to learn your client, you learn their quirks, you learn their, their habits. Um, for example, I know when Kathy's procrastinating because all of a sudden her inbox is super cleaned up and her calendar is getting worked on. And I'm like, hmm, what's Kathy not doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> that she should be doing, yeah. That she should be doing. I've also learned that um, how far out I have to pad things. So when I'm adding tasks on your calendar, I know when the real due date is, but then I have to pad it so far ahead because I know full well that it's going to get moved until it gets closer to that drop dead deadline. So that's right. That's exactly how my brain works. Okay. I see it there. I'm going to start thinking about it, but I'm not going to actually take any action on it yet. And I'm going to move that. Yeah. So, and the other thing that you've done for me is you said, Hey, why don't we meet like 30 minutes every other week? So those things that right. you've put off or that we really need to talk about, we can get done really quickly. Um, in this uh, 30 minute zoom session. And oh my gosh, it's just been amazingly productive doing that. Yeah. I'm really glad that we started doing that. And I've started doing that with all my clients now. Um, if my operations and project clients, we meet weekly, um, sometimes bi-weekly, like twice a week, if we're in the middle of a launch or a project. Um, but yeah, we can get a lot done because, you know, there's things that are not, important like it's not a priority it's not pressing but i need a decision or i need information before i can proceed with it and i just make a list for that we need to run through and ask my questions and then 
after that, I can get things taken care of. But it has made a huge difference being able to meet with you and my other clients, you know, weekly or every other week, just so we touch base and we know kind of what's coming up, what changes might be going on in the background, but we're not ready to announce them yet. So it's been a really big help to be able to meet like that. And I, and after we started that, I just started doing it with all my clients because I saw how helpful it is to be able to do that. Is really, really helpful. And, and, you know, I, I'd rather, I'd rather talk than write. Yes. I'd rather talk than do almost anything. So. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know that about me. Yes. Um, Yeah. And Carrie is so organized that um, she's talking about her team. Well, why don't you talk about the benefits of working with somebody like you who has a team? So the benefit can be huge. Um, You know, if you need copywriting done or content repurposing, editing, proofreading, that sort of thing, and you don't know anybody, well, if you're the business owner, that's a waste of your time. If, If you think about it, my current rate is $55 an hour. If your current rate is $300 an hour and you spend two hours trying to figure out your editing and your proofreading and trying to figure out how to say it in a specific way, you've just lost $600. If you outsource it to someone like me that has a team with an editor and a writer, you've only spent 40 or you've only spent $55. So the trade-off is huge as far as time and money. But, you know, and the great thing is that I have my team and everybody does something different and they're great at what they do. I only work with virtual experts on my team because I know that they were trained the right way and that they know what they're doing. Whereas if you try and, (laughs) whereas if you try and outsource it through things like Upworks and Fiverr, you know, just because it's cheaper, you're going to get what you pay for. And if you go with someone that's cheaper and their work is subpar, you're going to end up spending twice the amount of money to have someone else fix it. So it's, it's really helpful. I've done that in the past. Yeah. Long and the, time ago. <laughs> the great thing is that, you know, I have a team, but I've also got a network of people and each one on my team has their network of people. So if I don't know, or nobody on my team can handle it, someone might know someone else and makes this connection. And you know, the, the out, the, Outreach and the spread of the network circle is huge when you start involving other people that can do things that aren't your specialty, but they're very good at what they do. And another benefit to you having a team is if you're out sick, like you just were out for a couple of weeks with an operation or you're on vacation or anything like that, I don't have to suddenly do the work because somebody on her team has already been trained by her and they step in nobody misses a beat and they do all the work that's right um i am i've recently been off for three three and a half weeks um my first official is next week is when i'm back in the office but yeah um each one of my clients has a dedicated person from my team that is taking care of all of their projects and making sure everything is getting done and they're able to do that because I have SOPs for each client and each task that has to be done. So anytime they need to do something and they're not sure, they can refer back to the SOP. But that's exactly right. By having this team, my business was able to continue running, even though I wasn't in the office. And all of my clients have been able to continue running and operating and working because I have someone on my team that is covering tasks that... Uh, I would have been doing traditionally. And to the point where Carrie knows me so well, she knows what I'm going to procrastinate on while she's gone and that it needs to be done. And so she has other people (laughs) slacking me and saying, did you get this done? Because Carrie believes you will have moved it and not done it, but you'll be procrastinating on it. And I typed back, I already moved it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. You didn't know that? No. I already moved it. And I got the message back. You have to do it now. (laughs) 
And I said, okay. So I did it. Oh, good. <laughs> and I reported back that I did it. Excellent. <laughs> and then the next time something came up like that, I got another. How are you doing now with getting that done? And I'm like, I did it because I knew you were going to message me because <laughs> Carrie told you to. <laughs> well, I, at least now I know my system of checks and balances and, and SOPs is working. So that's great. It is. Absolutely. I, I was so shocked when I got that because I had literally just moved to the thing I was supposed to do. I, I mean, like seconds before you have the timing down perfect, even. That's I had just hilarious. Moved it to a couple of days later and I got that message and I'm like, does she read my mind? <laughs> she's, she's out healing and still it's like clockwork. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for being so thorough and caring so much because that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we've got to wrap up. Um, Carrie, any last things, thoughts, tips that you want to share with anybody? Um, you know, just don't be afraid to hire a virtual expert. We, we really know what we're doing. We've spent the money and invested in ourselves so that we can provide you with the white glove, best possible client experience that you have. And you shouldn't be afraid to hire a VA or a virtual expert. Um, and it takes communication from both parties. If we don't know what we're doing that you don't like, we don't know if you don't tell us. And for the most part, we're very open to suggestions to make sure that whatever system or whatever we're doing for you works for you because not the same thing doesn't work for everyone. So we, we make sure to tailor your experience to you and your business. So don't, and I can, I can tell you firsthand, she really, really tailors it to your business. And one of the thing I want to mention is while I know you have other clients, um, I don't know who they are. I don't know when you're working with them. I always feel like I am your only important client. I really do. And that is not easy to do, but you do it beautifully, Carrie. Well, thank you. I, I try to make each of my clients feel like they are my priority client because that's what they're worth to me. It's they are my priority. So I'm glad that you and feel I that way. And I 100% feel that way. <laughs> Fantastic. I've never not felt that way. Yeah. So and ha am I right? We've been working together two years? Yeah, two years. Yeah, which is awesome. It it's flown by, and you know it has. That, yeah, um, at, and what Kiri mentioned about um, that she and the other virtual experts have invested in themselves and their business. I found that if a virtual assistant, a freelancer, a support professional isn't willing to invest in themselves and in their growth, then they can't grow with my business, and they can't help my business grow. So this has just meant the world to me. And I thank you so much, Carrie. And thanks for being on my podcast. Absolutely. I was excited to do it. So if you're looking for uh, training on how to do email calendar management, uh, there's a link in the show notes to Carrie's training program. If you're looking for an operations manager or a project manager, you can click on the link to her website wolfdenvirtualassistance.com in the show notes. And if you're looking for somebody to run your email and calendar management or any of those combinations, yep. and, or you're not sure what you need, but you're impressed with Carrie as I am, just click on her wolfdenvirtualassistance.com link in the show notes, um, go to her site, schedule a time to talk with her and Carrie will just in one short conversation, she's going to give you huge value and be able to help, be able to help, you know, if you guys will be a good fit. So yeah. thank you so much, Carrie, for being here uh -huh. today. You are welcome. Thank you for listening to dare to leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.